We are at the Speed Art Museum here in Louisville, Kentucky. Come on, let's go inside. Hi, I'm Derek, and I'm so glad that you are here. Welcome to I See, I Think, I Make, a show where we do three things. We see different artworks, we think about some big ideas, and then we make some original artwork of our own. It's a lot of things that we're trying to do, so let's take a moment to get ready. <laughs> Today we are going to look closely at a very small but very important detail found in many artworks. To get ready for this, we're going to do some warm-up exercises for our eyes. This will help us relax and be prepared, but it'll also help you anytime your eyes are feeling tired, especially if you read books or you look at screens up close for a long amount of time. Okay, the first thing that we need to do is put down whatever we are reading. Then we need to take a few calm breaths in and out. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. But now we're also going to stretch our eyes. So now when you breathe in, I want you to focus on the tip of your nose. And when you breathe out, focus on the farthest away thing you can see. Maybe something outside. Deep breath in, tip of your nose. Deep breath out, focus as far as you can see. Deep breath in, tip of your nose. Deep breath out, as far as you can see. Now we're gonna practice moving just our eyes. So keep your head and body completely still, just like a robot, and face straight ahead. Now just with your eyes, look to the top left. Now to the bottom right. Now to the bottom left, now to the top right. Remember, robot, keep your head completely still. Just move your eyes. Again, look to the top left, now the bottom right, now the bottom left, now the top right. Now make big circles with your eyes, clockwise direction. Okay, and now make your eyes go the other way in a counterclockwise direction. Okay, that was a real workout. So now just close your eyes and let your eyes float to a relaxed place. Not straining, not focusing. Just keep your eyes closed and take one breath in and one breath out. Now open your eyes and we are ready to begin. There are several big questions on today's episode. What can we learn from an artwork just by looking at the eyes? And how can sight lines help us understand the story of an artwork? And can you, and I mean you, can you change the mood in one of your own artworks by changing the eyes? As you can see, Today, we are going to focus on eyes. We use our eyes to see the world, but we also communicate a lot of information through our eyes. Eyes can connect us to people, but also to objects. Here's a quick experiment to show you how by just adding eyes to an object, it can bring an object from meh to aw. Let me show you what I mean. Here's a book. Eh. Here's a book. Here's a phone, eh. here's a phone. Here's a pen, meh, but here's a pen. Just adding a couple of eyes and we already start connecting to objects. 
But real eyes can do more than just look silly. They can look happy, or sad, or confused, or scared, or angry. Eyes can tell us how a person is feeling. Humans naturally notice eyes. We seek them out, we stare into them, we study them to find out how someone feels. We even do this with art you see in museums. The next time you're in an art museum, notice how often you look into the eyes of a portrait. Especially if that artwork is made by a master, like this one. This painting is by Rembrandt. It's called Portrait of a 40-Year-Old Woman. The eyes are so carefully painted, so realistic, it's easy to be pulled in by the details. The small wrinkles around her eyes, her tired eyelids, that small sparkle of light reflected on the bottom lid of her eye, it's almost like a photograph. As we look, we start to connect with the real person who modeled for this painting. What was she like? What was she thinking about while she was being painted? How was she feeling? While we are staring into the eyes of another person, I've got a quick quiz question for you. The word for the black center of our eye is called the pupil. But where did the word pupil come from? Is it A, it comes from the French word pupil, meaning a student in school, because students show their paying attention in class when the teacher can see their eyes. B, it comes from the English word people, because nearly every person you ever meet has eyes. C, it comes from the sound pop pop, from seeing the earliest fireworks in ancient China because the black center of our eye looks like the night sky, and the ring of color around it looks like fireworks. Or is it D? It comes from the Latin word pupilla, meaning little doll, because you can see a tiny image of yourself reflected in the eyes of a person when you talk to them. So go on, make a guess. The correct answer is D. The word pupil comes from the tiny reflection you see of yourself in someone else's eyes, like a little doll. Now, if you got that right, congratulations. And if you didn't, well, now you know a little bit more about eyes. Here's a game you can play. I call it hands and eyes. First, sit with a friend facing each other, and then take your hands and cover up the top and the bottom of your face, so only your eyes are showing. Then make a face, and then see if your friend can guess what you're feeling. You can play the hands and eyes game the next time you're in an art museum looking at the faces you see in the artworks. When you find an artwork with people's faces, quickly use your hands to cover up everything you see except the eyes. Let's try this hands and eyes game with a couple of artworks. I'm gonna use these artworks that are from the Art Detectives program, and since they are artworks that I wanna keep safe, I'm going to put these gloves on. Okay, the first one here is a pencil drawing. So practice looking at the eyes and make a guess about how this person is feeling. Now I'll show you the rest of the picture. Now that you can see the way that they're sitting, all these dark shadows in the drawing. Does the rest of the picture match what you thought the person was feeling? Okay, this next drawing is a little more difficult. Her head is turned to the side and her eyes are closed, but still, make a guess. How do you think she's feeling? What's she doing? Is she asleep? Now let's look at the whole picture, and this might surprise you. She is not asleep. She is dancing. And now that you know this, look at her eyes again. What emotion do you see in her eyes? Okay, this next one is a photograph. So what do these eyes say to you? How is this person feeling? Now, let me show you the whole image. Look at this picture. 
see his posture, his clenched fist. This, this is a very famous photograph of Sitting Bull. Do his eyes express all the emotions you feel from the rest of the photograph? Okay, last one. This portrait is made with colorful pastels. So again, look at the eyes and see what you can discover. What is this person thinking? How are they feeling? Now let me show you the rest of the picture. And if this one was a little difficult for you to guess the mood in this artwork, just from looking at their eyes, you are not alone. There's, there's a little bit of mystery in this artwork. And one of the reasons for the mystery is because this person is looking at something, but we can't see what it is. Our eyes naturally want to follow in the direction that they're looking and see what has grabbed their attention. Noticing where a person is looking can be helpful. By following the direction of someone's eyes, we can figure out what they see. They're called sight lines. And what you do is you imagine a line coming from your eyes in the direction of the object that you're looking at. Like a, like a laser beam. Like this. Sight line! Pew! Pew! Sight line! Pew! Sight line! Pew, pew. But I'm not going to use this sight line superpower to melt through walls or to destroy buildings. I'm going to use sight lines to understand the complicated story in this painting. This painting is called Going to Service by Richard Redgrave from 1843. And at first glance, it might be a little bit difficult to figure out what's going on in this picture. But let's look at the sight lines as clues to help us understand what's happening here. In the center of the painting, there are two young women. They are the brightest part of the painting and they're right in the center, so immediately our eyes are drawn to them. And if we look at the sight lines of all the other people, they encourage us to look at what they're looking at, to pay attention to these two women, because they are at the center of the story. These two women are close. Maybe they're sisters? The taller woman is wearing a hat and a coat. She looks like she's about to leave the house. She has a slightly sad look on her face. But we don't know why she's sad. So let's look at her sight line as a clue. Her attention is focused on the younger woman, probably her younger sister. This woman is leaving home, leaving her whole family, and she is upset. But also trying to comfort her younger sister at the same time. Now look at the younger woman. She is definitely feeling sad too. And if we look at her sight line, we notice that she's looking down at the floor. And for her, the clue is not what she's looking at, but what she's looking away from that's so important. She is looking away from everyone and everything in the room, trying to pretend that it's not happening. She just doesn't want it to be true. Her older sister is leaving and she is heartbroken. These two sisters are saying goodbye. The older sister is forced to leave her home in the country and go to the big city to find a job so that she can support her family. The mother, sitting in the chair, has medicine on the table beside her. She's not well. You can see the worry on her face, but she isn't worried about herself. Her sight line helps us see how concerned she is for her daughter, wondering if she will be safe out in the big world and knowing that she won't be able to protect her. On the left side of the painting, there's a man at the door, and he's probably not part of the family. A reason for thinking this is his sight line. He is not focused on any of the people in the room. He's probably a worker only there to carry out the woman's luggage out to the wagon. There is another person we should look at hiding in the background, the man waiting outside. His sightline is also focused on the family inside, saying their final goodbyes. He's waiting to put this young lady in his wagon, like all the other women, and take them into the city. And here is one more interesting part of the sight lines of this painting. If you look at all the sight lines at the same time, 
you'll see that no one is returning the look of another person. No one is connecting to another person with their eyes. Everyone is alone in what they are feeling. This adds to the overall feeling of loneliness and helplessness of this very sad painting. It is amazing what you can discover in an artwork when you pay close attention to the sight lines. So today we're going to make some art where we draw a character and then really experiment with changing the eyes so it gives it a different emotion. I've started with a robot because I like making robots. And you'll notice here I made this robot but I don't have any eyes in it yet. Now if you want to do this you can draw a dragon or a cartoon face or your best friend. But if you want to make a robot I'll show you how I did it. I just started with a basic rectangle shape for the face but then I wanted to give it a little more perspective to it. So I added a few extra shapes on here so it kind of looked like a box, but at an angle. Then I also put a mouth on, that's kind of like a little oval shape. I have a triangle for a nose. But again, notice I'm not putting the eyes on yet. I'm gonna add a few more pieces here, like maybe I'll put some antenna on the top. I'll put some, uh, some ears on the side. So I've got my basic robot face, everything except the eyes. Now let's focus on what kind of expression we want. So here my robot is asleep, so I want to power on my robot. So I'm going to put some eyes on here and you're going to notice pretty quickly how it goes from having no expression, like this, to having a real personality to it. So power on the robot, it comes to life, there it is. It looks a little, it looks a little uh, scared, really. Maybe it's just really alert. It just sort of came to life. But I can do different things to change its expression just by changing the eyes. Maybe if I move those pupils just a little bit, it looks a little confused. I might have it looking down. Depending on what kind of mood I want my robot to be in. I can also add other pieces like eyelids. So I can make my robot look a little sleepy. Maybe it wasn't ready to be powered up yet. So it's a little groggy. <laughs> but I can also turn those eyelids just a little. It looks a little, looks a little confused. But if I don't want to put eyelids on there, I can use eyebrows. So here I've got my eyebrows. Looks again a little scared, a little uncertain. But just by changing those eyebrows a little bit, suddenly it looks, ooh, it's an angry robot. Err, angry robot. But then I can keep playing around with this. If I still haven't found the personality that I really want with my robot, I can change other smaller things. Like maybe I change the shape of the eyes. These are more kind of cute cartoony eyes that I could put in here. Maybe with a different pupil like this. Gives it a completely different look. Or maybe I want the robot to have like really like robot-y looking eyes like this. So I've changed those pupils from circles to squares. So once I've decided on the expression that I wanted to have, then I can glue those eyes on, and now I've got a robot with a lot of personality. These days, we get a lot of practice trying to understand how a person is feeling just by looking at their eyes. And if you look closely, you can often tell how a person is feeling, whether it's happy or sad or frustrated or uncertain. Just from their eyes. Eyes reveal so much information, and they're a great way to start making a connection to another person, even if that person is in a work of art. Thank you for watching. I see, I think, I make.